Thanks for sticking with us, Grade A Nation. We're now going to talk about Stephen Crowder, the political commentator, who fancies himself as a comedian, but in all honesty, he's not particularly funny. I mean, the only thing funny about him is he kind of looks like Lurch from the Adams Family. He's very, very odd looking. He's a big, tall, dumb uh, lummox. Still, that's neither here nor there. The focus is on the fact that Steven Crowder has had his YouTube channel demonetized. And the reason for it, apparently, is that some of his uh, content has repeatedly made remarks considered inappropriate directed to this one employee who works for the media outlet Vox, V-O-X. I believe the individual's name is Carlos Mencia. No, 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 that's not right. That, that's, um, that's the stand-up comic who steals all the jokes. Uh, Carlos Mazda. No, no, that's not it. That's, that's the car. Carlos Mazda. Carlos Maza, I believe that's it. I'll have to check with the uh, news team, the Great A Nation news team on that, but I, I believe it's Carlos Maza. So Crowder's uploads sometimes uh, occasionally goof on this Carlos uh, Mencia, Maza, Carlos Maza, and make fun of the fact that uh, Carlos happens to be homosexual, and happens to be Latino. And this has led Carlos Maza to repeatedly um, use Twitter to call out YouTube and say that they are not looking out for uh, individuals that identify as gay, that people who are... Uh, posting on YouTube are getting away with hate speech and harassment. And so that resulted in YouTube deciding to demonetize Steven Crowder's uploads. And it's a situation where it's tough because not only has Steven Crowder's content been demonetized, but the content of other people uh, content creators has been either demonetized or their channels have been terminated entirely. And the fact that this is all happening at once has raised some eyebrows. A lot of people are concerned that content that is not inflammatory is being flagged as potential Uh, hateful videos that violate the terms of service of YouTube. The thing is, is that, you know, some of these channels are history channels talking about uh, Nazis. And since they are talking about Nazis and might feature imagery about Nazis, the belief is that, oh, well, you know, this is inappropriate content. But I mean, I think it is important to learn about, you know, what the Nazi uh, party historically um, stood for, what the ramifications of the Nazi party are historically. And it it's a situation where, you know, informational content that is not advocating for white supremacy, neo-Nazism, these uh, uploads are being punished. They're they're just trying to inform people. They're not trying to spark hate or anything of that type. And I think the situation is one where a lot of folks don't understand how YouTube screens content. Because any given minute, there is a lot of content being uploaded 
to YouTube. It is not possible for every single piece of content uploaded to YouTube to be reviewed by people unless they were going to, you know, hire pretty much the entire uh, country of China and, you know, pay them uh, $2 an hour and say, hey, you know, you want to review some crappy videos? So it's a situation where YouTube has to use machine learning, artificial intelligence, to review what the upload says and ascertain whether or not the content is, you know, in line with the YouTube terms of use. But the problem is, is that the machine uh, learning, the algorithm, it's not necessarily that smart. So if it sees an upload where there are, is Nazi imagery and there are uh, Nazi historical figures being discussed at length, they're going to mark that as violating the terms of use, even though those videos are not necessarily advocating uh, the Nazi line, so to speak. So it's a matter of YouTube and its screening procedures not necessarily working or being as effective as it should be. Perhaps we should be a little bit uh, more patient with YouTube. Hopefully they can learn uh, how to devise a better screening mechanism, a smarter screening mechanism. But in the meantime, a lot of people have been hurt by the decision of YouTube. Lots of people have been demonetized. And you might say, well, I mean, these people aren't necessarily, you know, living off of their uh, YouTube earnings. But you have to be fair. A lot of these people are making, you know, 500, 1,000, 3,000 a year off of their um, YouTube ad revenue. And that's a lot of money for a lot of folks. And to have that suddenly taken away with no recourse, no ability to get that uh, revenue back in any way, that hurts them economically. That hurts them. So this whole situation has really just been an, uh, a humongous mess. Hopefully things will get better. Not particularly optimistic if there seems to be tension from all sides. It's really not necessarily uh, the left trying to impose fascist rules saying, oh, you know, you can't have X, Y, and Z mentioned on YouTube or you can't use these words on YouTube. Because it seems like all sides are trying to censor the other and silence the voice of the other. And that's something that we have to be very careful about because it's a slippery slope where you're going to see a lot of false flagging of content. And that's going to make it even harder for YouTube to determine whether or not an upload should stay or not, whether or not an upload should be monetized or not. So, like I said, it, it is... A big mess. We're going to have to wait and see how it plays out. And hopefully this doesn't have a major impact on the 2020 presidential election cycle where you're going to see people of all sides of the political spectrum trying to manipulate the YouTube algorithm. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll stick with it. And hopefully you stick with us. We appreciate you listening in. We'll check in with you as soon as possible on the next installment of Grade A Nation. Take care.